today we're going to talk about this beautiful 1991 Acura NSX and some of the issues that are wrong on this car and why it's here. Let's get started. So like I just said, this is a really nice 1991 Acura NSX. It's in here for some window issues, an antenna issue, a harmonic balancer cover that we're going to be putting on, and a few other issues. We're going to take a look at this thing, but the really crazy thing about this car is it has over 100,000 miles. Actually 101, 101,000 miles on this car. You wouldn't tell by looking at it, you would say well, maybe 30 or 40,000 miles, and you'd be wrong, it's over 100. It's really pretty crazy. But it's a testament to Japanese quality that you can just keep driving these things. They, they're built well. When this car came out, it was absolutely amazing. And it still is. It's a really cool car. It was Acura's entry into the supercar world. And although it's not as fast as that one, or that one, it's every bit as cool. When this goes flying down the highway, or pulls up downtown, wherever you live, big city, it catches people's attention just as much as the Ferrari would. It's just a really cool looking car. It still has the stock wheels on it, which a lot of people think look really tiny and look really small. They wouldn't be modern to today's standards. But that's what this car is all about. It's stock. It's not been tampered with. It's not been turned into Fast and Furious. It's just like it was when it left the factory, and that's what I like about this car. It does have some small pits on the hood which the customer that owns this car drives this car. But for the amount of miles that are on the car, I don't doubt that. It doesn't surprise me. This car's been driven like it's supposed to be. But otherwise, it's not cracked or broken or any, any body panels damaged or anything like that. Move around to the back. This is really my favorite part of the NSX. The back just looks really cool. When you pull it behind this car, you don't mistake it for an Integra or a Toyota Camry. You, it catches people's eye. They're like, wait, what is that? And then they figure out, oh, it's an NSX. It's really, really a cool car. So as you can see, it's not beat up or damaged. It's been taken care of. So let's take a look at the engine. So those of you who are not initiated with the Acura NSX, or maybe have heard about them but don't know much about them, I'm going to play a little funny game with you. We're going to try to find the engine. So let's start up front. Oh, a spare tire. An ABS unit and a radiator. Brakes and some fuse boxes. And there's no engine there. There is a lot of things packed inside of here. There's the HVAC box, heater core, evaporator core. Your condenser and air conditioning components are all up here. That's about it. Oh, and the battery is down there underneath the HVAC box. But still, there's no engine here. Oh my goodness, can you imagine using the spare tire? Look how orange it is. It's like Halloween. Bright orange, it'd be embarrassing almost. But I guess they don't want you keeping that tire on there, so. Well, let's move to the back. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, a trunk. Well, there's no engine here. Let's double check. No? There's the items to change the tire, like a jack and a screwdriver and a few other things back here. There's a CD changer. And the car cover. And there's the CD changer on the side there. And here's the antenna we'll be fixing here, looking at seeing what's wrong with that. It doesn't go all the way down. Well, no engine there. So we went to the front, we went to the back, there's no engine. All that's left is glass. 
How in the world do we get to the engine on this car? Let me show you. The back window. There we go. There's the engine. A Honda 3 liter VTEC V6. 270 horsepower and 210 pound feet of torque. Which, for as light and small of a car this is, it's, it's plenty. It does the job. It's actually very fun to drive. I've made comments in, in previous videos that sounds like a Honda Odyssey van when you drive these. The car itself is really cool, but the engine, I just wish, I mean, it does the job, it's powerful. I just wish they would have put a Honda V8 in it or something along those lines. But for what it is, it does pretty good. So the owner's actually made a comment to me. He has a 2018 or 2019 Honda Accord that actually is faster, handles better, and is more fun to drive than his NSX. And that just shows technology, how it's changed. Your common family car is so much great technology on it anymore that these cars can't even hardly keep up. But here's the really cool thing about this car. It doesn't have four and five and 600 horsepower, but yet it's very fun to drive. You can wind through the gears and really rev this motor out and not have to worry about egregiously breaking the speed limit. So you get the sound of the engine revving, you get to row through the gears and enjoy the drive without hitting 190 miles an hour. This car could probably do that speed, but it would take a lot longer than, say, the Murcielago or the 360 Modna that's over there. It is really a driver's car. It's not meant to drag race. It's meant to enjoy the handling, to enjoy the sound of the car, going through the gears, going through the RPM range. It's not meant for really light to light. So let's go ahead and get this thing on the lift and take a look underneath, how they design this car underneath. When you put a car on the lift and you need to roll the car backwards, you never ever push on the body and roll it backwards. I've had friends before in the shop or even new mechanics or say, hey, help me push this car and they go to push it and I just say stop. We don't push on the body. We roll by the tire, just like you saw in the video, roll it into place where it needs to be. You could very easily crack the body or crack something on it. Now what? Now what do you do? So we got this thing loaded on the lift. Let's take it up. So whenever we're checking out a mid-engine supercar, there's many times where you want to check the radiator for leaks. And that can be in many different places on these supercars. On this one, it happens to be right up front like a normal car. But that wouldn't be the case on the Murcielago that's beside me. They're back there in the back, and there's actually air scoops that draw an air along the side in through the radiator. You wouldn't do very good looking for radiator leaks up front on the Murcielago. But you do on this. Let's take a look. So this is the core support right here for the radiator, and right above it is the radiator. We can see that it's nice and dry. There's no leaks. Nothing going on there. You don't have to worry about any oil pan leaks because there is no oil pan here. There's just a spare tire and a battery. And you can see the very interesting suspension setup up front. On the few that I've worked on in the past, it's always very interesting to see this myriad of different parts and components that go together to make the front suspension. It's very interesting. Brakes look good. Nothing loose there. Check the sway bar link. Nothing there. This car does not have power steering, so it's not really going to have a power steering leak from the rack or anything because it's manual. 
which gives it that nice good feel when you're driving. Brakes are good. Nothing loose there. Sway bar link is good. Here's our ABS module, which is failure prone on these vehicles. This one actually makes a little bit of a chatter noise. We're going to be addressing that this time around. These can be sent off to be rebuilt, but they can also be deleted. Like on Hoovy's Garage NSX, this is a long time ago, but we ended up doing a delete on it and it had manual brakes just like a race car. But uh, just really depends on what the owner wants to do and how much they want to spend. But we'll be definitely addressing that. Here we can see coolant pipes, air conditioning lines, all kinds of different hoses and pipes that go right down the middle of the car through the center channel. This is the floorboard. Here's our fuel tank. Right in the middle of the car. Actually right behind the seats is where your fuel tank is on these. So Car Wizard, if the engine's back here and so many components are in the front of the car, is, can that cause a problem? No, it won't cause a problem, but it, it creates more time involved with diagnosis. If there's a coolant leak, you're not just focused in the engine area. You can be all up and down the entire length of the car. There could be a coolant leak. There's pipes and hoses all through the center of this car. Let's see here. I don't see much going on over there. There's a tiny seepage here, but it's really not much to worry about. Here's the transmission right here, or transaxle actually. Here's our shifter cables that come into it. And looks like there's some seepage from the oil filter itself. Let's see if it's loose. No? A new oil filter will take care of that. There. So right here is the harmonic balancer and he has ordered a cover that goes over that to protect anything were to happen with the harmonic balancer, protect from damage. We'll be installing a harmonic balancer cover. Here's an oil cooler up here, which can also have leaks from the hoses or gaskets or seals. And then here we have out back the exhaust. There's the big muffler, there's a cat and another cat. The tires look like they could be changed out here in the future and that's going to be something that the customer wants addressed as well. You can see it's down to the wear bars right here. It goes straight across. Definitely time for a new set of tires on this car. Check for any looseness. Sway bars are good. Brake pads are good. Go check over here. Pads are good. Sway bar is good. Nothing loose there. So that's what the bottom of an NSX looks like. It's just your typical engine and transmission, but the configuration is kind of different. It's, it's not standard. It's something to be strange or kind of alien to some people. This will be type of a car, or especially the 360 or Lamborghini, that you don't really take to your corner mechanic shop because they work on Camrys, Accords, Cadillacs, Dodge Neons, and all of a sudden this thing shows up and they get underneath and the mechanic doesn't even know which direction to go. He's like, what? I don't understand what's going on here. You really have to have someone working on this car that has an open mind. Someone who says, I don't care the way it's set up. I'll understand it and I'll figure it out and I'll get this car fixed. So let's go ahead and lower it down, take a look at the interior. This has a classic 1990s style door handle, which is on the side. Kind of interesting. Go ahead and take a look at the interior. There you go guys, you can see 101,661 miles on this car. This car has been enjoyed, it has not been sitting and sitting, it's been out on the road. The dash is in good shape, everything else is in really good shape, it's got the nice beige interior. One common issue that fails on these a lot is the HVAC control head, the AC won't turn on and it's because there's a failure inside of there. 
that actually happened to this one, and I've had that out and sent it off to be rebuilt for this guy. And it works great today, even. This one has the CD changer in it. Five-speed transmission. What else is here? And like I mentioned ago, the beige interior, or almost white, I guess. I really, I really like the coloration on this car. It looks really nice. Definitely 90s styling, and I really like it. It's really cool. The turn signal stocks and everything on here are almost like IndyCar or F1. The way they're set up, it's really kind of cool. I've never seen that on any other car, really, of this era. It's a very, very interesting setup. Why don't you try the driver's window over there, Mrs. Wizard? Try to push it down. A bunch of binding and grinding going on, huh? It doesn't sound very good. Nope. We have actually a part that customer supplied a new window regulator. So that's a common issue on the NSX models is regulator failure. The customer actually has a brand new one in the box. We're going to be replacing that one and get it fixed. But the other ones I've had in the shop, it was the same scenario. Window regulators, window regulators, and also HVAC control heads. Seems like a common issue, a failure point in the interior. But otherwise, except for the high mileage, this car is in very, very good shape. It's very nice. One really cool feature I like about these early 90s NSX is something you lose as the years go on in this model of car and you get into the facelift model is that you get clear lenses up front and there's something that stops happening and that is this. That is just quintessential 1990s. It's really, really cool. I like that about this car. And these work perfectly. So thanks for following along with this really cool NSX. There's not a lot of these around. There's just a few around in the Wichita area, and I always enjoy working on them. They're really an interesting car. Like I said, we're going to take care of the window. We're going to do the harmonic balancer cover, check into the ABS issue, the, the antenna. There's a few issues, kind of a small laundry list of things to do to this car. So we'll get these issues addressed, have another happy NSX customer. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on these types of cars, there's all my tools listed in the Amazon Affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and I appreciate that. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, I really appreciate it if you guys do that now because we've got many more cool videos and yacht videos to come. Thanks for watching.